Hello, welcome back. I have another block for you. You knew I would. And I already filmed this, but I was looking over the footage and it just isn't clear enough. And that won't do because this is a special block. I like this one. This one I'm calling Little Roses. And can you see they're, they're actually clusters. Each of these is a cluster. And what that means, um, some of you crocheters will know what a cluster is. Um, you're basically taking one stitch, increasing it, working it for a little bit, then decreasing it back down. So you've got like a poof. It's not a bobble. We'll get to bobbles. Although it's, you know, it's kind of similar, but it's not exactly the same. This is a cluster stitch. So there are two right side rows and two wrong side rows four row pattern. On row one, we're going to take one stitch and increase it up to three. On row three, we're going to decrease the three stitches back down to one. The wrong side rows are really easy. Once you have increased up to three stitches, you just work a simple purl three, knit three, purl three, knit three. You'll see. It, 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 this is an easy pattern to read your knitting. It'll kind of give you direction on how to go. But on the fourth row, when we have decreased back down to one stitch, you just, you just knit across the row. Easy. So I hope you'll join me for this one. I'm going to show you how to do it. It's easy. It's easy. We're going to learn something new today, but I assure you it's easy. So I'll meet you at the other camera. Hang on. Okay, so here we have one repeat of our cluster done. And you can see how nice they are. You can see the knit. Can you, can you see how this started out as one stitch and then more was added to it? So to do that, We are going to try to remain in focus <laughs> so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so this is row one. So right where that cluster is, we are going to increase this stitch and make three stitches out of it. We are going to knit in the front of the stitch, the back of the stitch, and then the front of the stitch again. And we have made three stitches out of it. So I'll show you what I'm doing. Um, because, you know, you're, you're actually doing a lot of things. We are going to go into this stitch and we're going to kind of elongate it so that we have more to work with. Then we're going to go into this back loop Use your thumb to kind of hang on to that stitch so it doesn't escape. Come through and elongate it again so you have room to stick your needle in. And I'm pulling kind of hard on this so that it will go through all of the plies of yarn. And there you have it. And I um, don't know if any of you noticed, but I lost one of my stitches here. So if you lose a stitch, what you want to do is you want to get you want to get your stitch back. So here what I'm doing is I'm just taking this live stitch. This is called a live stitch when it looks like that. And we're just kind of looping that through to where it was. Had it and I lost it. And then put it on the proper needle. Okay, part of what I'm doing is made um, more difficult for me because I'm not looking at my knitting, I'm looking more in the camera, <laughs> so it'll be easier for you. But yeah, basically you want to grab as, as much of a stitch as you can if you lose one so you can rebuild it. Here we are at the start of our cluster again, going to knit into the front into the back, 
and into the front again and see see even my index fingers are working it gets kind of tight in there and so you don't lose this next stitch like I did on the last one make sure that you kind of grab onto it so it doesn't fall off the needle so it's you know I'm saying that it's a lot of work it's it's not really you get used to it but at the very beginning it's kind of foreign because you've got so much going on all in that one single stitch but all we're doing is knitting we're just doing a knit 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 we're just going from the from the front leg to the back leg to the front leg and then pulling them all off and through the back and through the front again and off. All right. So that's row one. It's it's um, pretty straightforward. And like I said, you can read the knitting pretty well because you've got one stitch there. So you know you have to make you you have to increase it into three. When you've got three stitches there, you know that you decrease it back down to one. So it's it's a it's a fun pattern to work. I think because it knits fast and it's easy to read. So you're not looking at a pattern all the time. You'll look at the pattern for the first repeat, maybe the second repeat. And then after that, you know, you can just go on your own. So there we go. And we're gonna end the block as we started with the three pearls. Now, row two is easy. We've learned how to do our ribbing, and basically it's just ribbing. We're going to knit three, purl three, knit three, purl three. We're just maintaining the pattern that we've established. And the reason why it's knit three, purl three, instead of knit the knits and purl the purls is because it's kind of hard to see what's going on there. So you need a little bit of guidance to say, yes, we want to purl all these stitches. There's a cat that's going to come into view. Hello, kitty cat. Yeah, so this is definitely one of those um, blocks that you might want to make multiples of because it's pretty, it goes quickly, and um, yeah, it's one, of, it's one of the good ones, I think. There are various forms of cluster stitches and this one's a nice, a nice beginner one. Now on this next row, what we're going to do, remember, we've added a little bit of length to our work so that our little clusters um, you know, we can see them more. Because if you increase and then decrease right back down, sometimes it's hard to see what's going on there. Um, yeah, maybe maybe the cat is going to um, slow me down a little bit. She's found the yarn. She said, this, this, is, this is great. Hey, you, okay. So sorry. I filmed, I, I refilmed this because um, it was kind of blurry and not great quality and now we've got, um, now we've got cat antics going on. She's, um, she's not a really young cat, but she's not old either. She's, she's kind of in the, in the midpoint of her life where, you know, things are good. Things are good. Rescued from a shelter. Alrighty, so now we are going to go on to row number three. Starting again with our pearls. And, um, you know, like I've discussed before, if you want to add an edge stitch to that, that would be perfectly fine too. But, you know, my feeling is let's learn the stitch before we start, um, you know, adding, adding things to it. That's my motto. Now, this is the sort of traditional way to hold the needles. 
What we want to do is we are going to knit these three stitches together and you have to almost get these knitting needles parallel to each other. Um, it's, it's tough going through three stitches and that's why we want to that's why we want to elongate when we're creating them so that they're easier to knit together. So we learned to knit two together on our lace block. And this is the same thing. Instead of knitting two together, we're knitting three together. So go under that first stitch. It's very, very tight in there. <coughs> Excuse me. Very, very tight in there. But do the best that you can. And the first repeat, you're going to learn a lot. You're going to learn, you know, how, how tight or loose to make these. And sometimes it helps to go through them, you know, forward. To loosen them all up so that then you can go through them this way and it gives you a little more room it slows you down but you know speed isn't always the point of everything is it I'll show you again I'm pulling them down with my thumb a little bit to give me more room holding on so that they don't escape so holding on and pulling down and slipping that in there best we can and you can kind of feel when you've got all of the stitches in there and you've pulled your yarn through there's a little bit of a tug and then it bursts you know so that you can you can feel that you've got everything and your stitch will be a success aren't those cute little tiny clusters i'm calling them little roses Probably because I've got spring fever. And, you know, they, they look kind of like roses. Roses have a lot going on. You know, petals. Petals created from petals, you know. All right, now the next row. The next row is the easiest row of all. This one was fun. But it's, it's definitely work. The next row, all you do, remember on row two, our other wrong side row, we knitted three stitches and then we purled three? We've only got one stitch here. And I suppose you could purl it if you wanted to. It would, it would give you, you know, a little bump in there. But the pattern is written for just knit. So all we are going to do is knit across the row. That's all we're doing. We're knitting that stitch so that on the next row we'll have the one single stitch there and then we'll increase back up to three. So see what I mean about this being a very easy block to read? It's fun. This is the reverse side and the reverse side looks nice too. It, it has sort of that rib look, a little bit of, you know, sort of reminiscent of our garter um, peeking through one of our earlier blocks. So do give this block a, a try. It is fast. It is pretty. Um, it's one of those patterns that's easy to remember. Maybe you'd want to make a scarf out of this pattern and you could have your knitting on the go. Wherever you go, you can, you can do a repeat now and again. And before you know it, you'll have a finished scarf. If, if you do do something like that, I would definitely recommend edge stitches, maybe two or three garter edge stitches. But there we have it. Now we've got two repeats. Aren't they lovely? You've got this little little bar that's going across the base. And I just think they look like little rosebuds. Um, so do give it a try. It's it's not as hard as um it's not as hard as you think it's going to be. It's a very pleasant thing to knit. I'll meet you back at the other camera. So what did you think? I think it's a good one. I think it's a good one. It, it knits up really, really fast. And um, I've got my, got my, my edging on it. 
So it's all ready to go. It's one of these nice firm blocks. So, um, you know, maybe make a few of them. It's a, it's a good one. And it looks, it looks good whichever way you want to present it. Whichever, you know, both sides are good. You can put it upside down and it'll still look beautiful. So give this one a whirl. It's a, it, it's a fast one. So I'll see you back here soon because you'll be ready for a new one. I think I'm going to take a, a little bit of a break because I've got some people wanting to knit socks. So I think maybe um, next week we'll start on socks. So if you've got some sock yarn, if you need some sock yarn, it's easy to obtain. Get a good quality. I like Peyton's Croy. Um, I find it at Michael's. You can order it, you know, through catalogs or wherever. And get some double pointed needles. If you go to a yarn shop, they may direct you to a very small circular. I don't knit socks on a circular needle. I use double pointed. But um, you know, if you've if you've knit socks before and you're coming back to it, maybe you have a preference. But if you have no preference, it's it's really I like to start out with basics, and um, there's nothing more basic than double pointed needles. So get a pair to match the um, the sock yarn that you get. They're all pretty much the same size. If they're four socks, they tend to stay the same. I am going to be casting on 64 stitches. So do a little bit of quick math. See maybe what your gauge works out to be. And, um, if, you know, you know if you're knitting socks for somebody with, you know, larger larger legs and larger feet, you know, maybe you need them a little bit bigger. Sometimes the way to get that is through needle size. So you maybe don't want to cast on a different number of stitches than I do. Maybe use a slightly bigger needle. And by slightly bigger, you know, we're talking still teeny. Um, but I'll see you next week for a new block or a sock.